I think the three things that stood out was firstly a call from the floor for more international co cooperation and collaboration, of which there's just not enough of at the moment. Second thing was that recognition that there needs to be more education at a national level to cover all uh, citizens in a state. And the third one was that the definition of privacy is going to evolve over time. Whereas we can all agree what security looks like, privacy is driven by culture, by na uh, national history and by an individual's view of what's important to them. I think the big one's going to be the Internet of Things and what does the security look like, not just for the Internet of Things, but the base technologies that the Internet of Things will depend on, like 5G. So thinking about, you can have devices, you're going to be in the network for maybe 20 years. So we need to make sure that we're building security in, not bolting it on for those products. We've got to make sure that they're segregated so that when there are inevitable issues in 10, 15 years time, they're not impacting the newer technologies. I think we're at a wonderful point in the uh, development of technology where we've learned the lessons from the past, now's our opportunity to execute and execute well. Well, I think we're working on all of those technologies, having working for such a large organisation of uh, 176,000 people. Um, with every opportunity comes a challenge, and it's about how these technologies are going to be used in the future. And it's limitless, the, uh, the um, imagination that we're going to have as far as opportunities are concerned. The problem is the bad guys are just as innovative as the good guys. So whatever we develop, they're going to come up with a way to uh, monopolize that, use it for their own ends. And that's where there's always going to be that balance. It is an arms race between the good guys and the bad guys. So uh, I think we're always going to be busy. I think more lucrative and easier, quite frankly. I think the barriers to entry have lowered so far now for uh, cybercrime, where you can just buy threats, you can buy uh, vulnerabilities, you can buy lists of people to attack. And the reasons to attack have begun so, so large now that, yes, I can understand why there, uh, there's a reluctance to get involved in physical crime when cybercrime is now so easy. No, I don't. I think it'd be a lovely theory. Um, look, you can't have trust without privacy. You haven't got privacy without security. So you're building up. And I don't think we've, we've yet established a baseline for how to actually implement good security and how to measure good security. I think there's a lot of good work going on at the moment. But I think we're still really at the early part of the journey. There's a lot of legacy technologies that are still being used day in, day out by all members of uh, uh, society. And until we actually go through that exercise of getting rid of the legacy technologies, moving to the newer secure technologies, or at least mitigating the risks of the old technologies, there's still going to be a, a huge cyber risk and cyber crime. It's certainly going to be a very different security paradigm in the future. We're not quite there yet. But there's a lot of companies working on it, including ours, are pushing forward the boundaries. How that actually looks when it comes to implementation, I think is still an open question because it's too early in the development.